Oliver Twist, by Charles Dickens, adapted by Lisa Malaki, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Part One, Chapter One, despised by all, pitied by none. On a day long forgotten, in a poor town in England. A boy was born in a workhouse. There was almost no story to tell, for the first minutes of Oliver's life were almost his last. His breath came slowly until he finally sneezed and let out a long wail. This lets the poor workers know that they had another mouth to feed. As Oliver gave proof of the power of his lungs, a pale face lifted from the pillow. Let me see my child before I die. The surgeon had been sitting by the fire. You must not talk about dying yet, he said. Bless her dear heart, said the nurse. She deposited Oliver in the woman's arms. The mother pressed her pursed lips to Oliver's forehead, passed her hands over his face. Then fell back onto the pillow and died. <laughs> It's all over," said the surgeon. "You needn't send for me if the baby cries. Just feed it gruel." He paused and looked at the woman. "Where did she come from? She was quite pretty." The nurse scooped the baby into her arms. "She was brought here last night." She was found lying in the street. Her soles were worn through, her feet blooded. Where she was going to, nobody knows. The nurse wraps the baby in a blanket. She put him down to rest. She knew he'd be despised by all and pitied by none, just like all the people of the workhouses were. When Oliver was about ten months old. He was sent to an other workhouse. This workhouse was run by a woman named Mrs. Mann. Mrs. Mann was in charge of twenty-five children. Do not be fooled into thinking Mrs. Mann loved or even liked children. She took them in because she was paid to do so. Part of her payment was to feed and clothe the children. Being a greedy woman, she kept all the money for herself. Oliver and the others got used to going to bed with empty bellies. Word would come to Mrs. Mann when an inspection was to take place. It was only at these times the children were bathed, spruced up, and given a full meal. When Oliver Twist was nine, the head of the workhouse, Mr. Bumble, paid a surprise visit to Mrs. Mann. Oliver Twist is nine today," said Mr. Bumble. "We never did figure out who his father or mother were." Mrs. Mann raised her hands in astonishment. "How does he have any name at all?" "I named him," said Mr. Bumble. "We named the children in alphabetical order. The child before him was Swabble, then the T was Steel, so." I named him Twist. Oliver is too old to stay here. It's time he moves back to the house he was born into. I've come to take him. I'll fetch him myself," said Mrs. Mann. After a quick cleaning of his outer layer, Oliver was brought before Mr. Bumble. Make a bow to the man, Oliver," Mrs. Mann said. Oliver quickly bowed his head. Will you come with me, Oliver? Asked Mr. Bumble. Before he answered, Oliver saw Mrs. Mann shaking her fist as a warning to the young boy. Oliver was used to her threats. Will she be going with me? He asked. I'm afraid not," said Mr. Bumble. Although Oliver was not sad to be leaving Mrs. Mann. He quickly pretended to be sad at the sight of her shaking fist. 
Mrs. Man shoved him off with a thousand embraces and a piece of bread and butter. She couldn't have Oliver appearing too hungry when he arrived at the workhouse. As the gate closed behind them, Oliver felt a sudden sadness in leaving behind the only friends he had ever known. Oliver was immediately brought before a council of ten men at the workhouse. They decided that Oliver should start work the very next day. Life in the workhouse was hard. Meals were limited to once a day, with the rare exception of a holiday here and there. The boys ate in a large stone hall. A copper stove stood at one end, with a master constantly stirring the gruel in it. There was never a need to wash the bowls, as the boys licked them clean. Oliver and his friends suffered a slow starvation for three months. One day, a new boy came along. He wasn't used to hunger. His father had owned a small cook shop before he had died, and left the boy an orphan. The boy's eyes grew wild with hunger. If I don't get more food, I shall eat one of you. This frightened all the other boys. Oliver was pitched to get more food for this boy. He took his bow and presented it at the stove. Please, sir, I want some more. The cook was a fat, nasty man. He couldn't believe his ears. What do you say? Please, sir, repeated Oliver. I want some more. The cook crashed a ladle down on Oliver's head and called for Mr. Bumbo. Bumbo was horrified to learn that Oliver had asked for more food. It simply wasn't done. Bumbo took Oliver before the council. He shall be hung, said one of the men. An animated discussion took place. Oliver was ordered into confinement. And a note was hung on the gate outside the next day. It said, "Offering five pounds to anyone who will take Oliver Twist off the hands of the parish." Poor Oliver, he was about to be shoveled off once more. Chapter Two: Oliver becomes an apprentice. As punishment. Oliver stayed inside his small, dark, cramped room for more than a week. He had committed the crime of asking for more food, a basic need that he often had been denied. During the day, Oliver cried bitterly, but during the night, he covered his eyes with his small hands to shut out the darkness. He crouched against the wall, which is the only thing he felt comforted by. Once a day, he was brought before the boys and flogged as an example. It was during the second week that Mr. Gamfield, a chimney sweep, saw the reward notice. He was met at the gate by Mr. Bumble. I want you to take the boy in to teach him to be a chimney sweep," said Gamfield. "I need an apprentice." Mr. Bumble led him into the workhouse and straight to the council. It's a nasty trade," said one of the men when Gamfield stated his intentions. "Your boys have been smothered inside of chimneys," said another. After much conversation, it was decided that Oliver Twist would not be permitted to go. Mr. Gamfield was angry. A few of the boys he had taken in had died. Were they holding this against him? How about I take him for less, say three or four pounds? The men shook their heads. He's yours for three pounds. He's just a boy for you. He doesn't eat much. If he misbehaves, smack him around, and he'll be fine. The bargain was made. And Oliver Twist was released from his small room. He was ordered to put on a clean shirt and given gruel and bread. Oliver wept, for he thought they wanted to fatten him up 
before they killed him. No tears, Oliver," said Bumpo. "You should be thankful. You're going to be an apprentice. You have no parents of your own. Now you will have a kind and blessed gentleman have turned you into a man." Then he smirked at Oliver. It did cost the workhouse money, three pounds to be exact, three pounds for a naughty orphan that no one has ever loved. Oliver sobbed. On their way to the council, Bumbo want Oliver to appear happy. You must say you are looking forward to being a chimney sweep apprentice. Mister Limpkins was on the council. He stared at the boy. I suppose he's keen on the idea of chimney sweeping. Lives for it," said Bumbo, giving Oliver a small pinch. Mister Limpkins looked at Gamfield. You fit him and treat him well. Gamfield nodded. You look like an honest man," said Limpkins as he moved his glasses about. If his eyesight had been proper. He would have seen into the evil soul of Gamfield. Oh, I am," said Gamfield with an ugly leer. "I have no doubt you are," said Limpkins. He fixed his glasses more firmly on his nose and looked about him for the instant. This was a critical moment of Oliver's fate. If the instant had been where the old man thought it was, he would have dipped his pen into it and signed the papers. Oliver would have been hurried off, but since his instant was not in front of him, he searched about. That's when his eyes landed on a pale and frightened face. My boy, what's wrong? Mister Limpkins asked. Oliver burst into tears. He fell onto his knees, clasping his hands together. He begged them to beat him, kill him, send him back to the darkness, anything but send him home with this dreadful man. Limpkins tore up the piece of parchment. No deal was struck. Gamfield was sent away, and Oliver was brought back to his dark room. The next morning. A sign was once again hung on the gate. It declared that Oliver Twist could be theirs for the sum of five pounds. Mister Sowerberry, the undertaker, was the next to inquire about Oliver Twist. Mister Bumble led him in front of the board. It was decided that Oliver would be a help to this man. When caught upon, Oliver appeared. He was told that he was to make coffins and wasn't allowed to complain or return to the workhouse. If you do so, you will be sent out to sea, Mister Bumbo said. If that's the case, you could drown or get knocked about on the head. With a small bag, Oliver was led to his new home and workplace by Bumbo. Mr. and Mrs. Sowerberry greeted the boy. Oliver bowed. "Dear me," said the wife, "he's so small." "He is small, but he will grow," said Mr. Bumble. "We'll have to feed him, which will cost us more than he is worth," said the woman. She opens the cellar door. "Get down there and work, you bag of bones." She pushed Oliver down a steep flight of stairs into a stone cold cellar. It was the kitchen. A young girl sat at a table, darning socks. Charlotte said, "The woman, give this boy the chips. We set out for trip. I suppose the boy will think his food is just fine." Oliver devoured the dog's food without hesitating. The woman was horrified that he had finished so quickly. She thought of all the future meals he would eat. She turned to her husband and asked, "What have you done?" Mrs. Sowerberry then turned to Oliver and said, "Now that you're finished, come with me."
You don't mind slipping a mound of coffins, do you? <laughs> she laughed as she pointed to a thin mattress under a counter. I suppose it don't matter a bit because you have no choice in the matter. <laughs> Oliver had no choice but to obey the evil woman. Thank you for watching. This is the end of part one. To be continued in part two. If you like the story, please like, share, and subscribe. See you then.